Hey, welcome to Studio 5. And for all you ladies out there, today is a rare chance for you to see exactly what is in a man's head. And believe me, there's not much there. And really, that's not, that's not just a joke. <laughs> there really is more truth to that than you, than you really realize. Studio 5 relationship coach Matt Townsend is here. He's even going to agree with that, yes. right? Yes. There's very little in the head. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> you know what, men, we, we got to get some things out there because women tend to think men aren't that interested and they're not that engaged and that we just don't care. So today, if you're going to romance a man, you got to blow up some of those myths, okay? What? Darren? <laughs> Darren's <laughs> like, I disagree. <laughs> men don't care. Well, you know, and, and some of the stuff you're going to share with us today, a couple points I even found a little bit interesting. Most of it I understand because I'm a guy yeah. and we think this way. It seems normal. So we're talking how to romance your man. Yeah. What don't women understand then when it comes to romancing men? Well, uh, the word romance pretty much isn't <laughs> part of the deal with the man. If the wind's blowing, we're good. That's all a man needs to feel good about something. No, we're different. So what women think about the romance differently than men. Men, and you've got to value these differences. In fact, you've got to appreciate the differences. For example, men are much more visual than women are, right? That's one reason why lingerie is a big deal, because we're visually stimulated. It's, it's the seeing of something. Sometimes it's seeing, I have so many clients that say, I, I can't even make dinner without my husband wanting to attack me. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you making? And, uh, but you know what? I gotta get the rest but part of, the of it is just that they're sitting there, they're hungry, and they're watching their partner make dinner. So remember, men are more visual. Um, a couple of other things. Men are a lot more solo beings than social beings. Men would pretty much rather just be alone with you than with a bunch of friends with you. They, they're kind of more that? solo. No, I don't understand. Why would that not be? Why? I mean, a guy wants to be with his wife. That's romantic. Yeah. Why would you want to be with a whole bunch of people? Because it's fun. The more the oh. merrier, right? Thank no. you, ma'am. Oh. Um, <laughs> mercy. It's, it, it's, okay. <laughs> so shut it. Okay. That's why we're not romancing, ladies. <laughs> men want to be a little bit more solo. A couple of other things. Men, the touch. The men need four times more touch than women do. Now, that just, you just think is because we're horn dogs. That's a and lot we, of touch. Four <laughs> times? Really? But, See, women need touch, too. It's just the touch means something to us. Remember, men bond differently than women. Men bond in action. Amen. <laughs> See, Amen, brother. Pregnant pause right there. Men bond in action. That's why women, I was his exclamation point. <laughs> women tend to bond in conversation. So women actually, what would really create a romantic evening was it would like candlelight. Men don't, men, fire and men don't mix. It has a whole different meaning for it. It's, not, it's you cook over fire. We don't need, we don't romance over fire. It's not, it's not that way. But we want to bond in an activity. That's why when you first fell in love, you used to do a lot more action. You used to go bowling. You used to have fun. You used to do stuff. Um, by the way, you used to also talk more. We used to talk to you more yes. because we knew there would be action at some point. <laughs> so one of the, it sounds bad, but action can be anything. So if you want to romance your partner, there's got to be activities involved with it. Another thing about it, the men, that's a kind of, I guess, an interesting idea, is we really like predictability. When men are trying to land and, and, and find the woman and get her and get her to buy into marrying him, he's all over the place. He's the life of the party. He's the star, you know. Eventually, we, when we finally feel safe with you and comfortable with you, we we settle in and we become fairly predictable. Now, a lot of women want the guy that enticed them, the exciting one, the life of the party. The new, the fun, the interesting. Uh -huh. But what, what we're tying, what we're, and this women don't like this, but what we're saying to you when we get boring and sit around in our boxer shorts and eat Cheetos, <laughs> um, have Cheetos stuck to our chest. I have a horrible image of that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. That was just this morning. Um, <laughs> but when all of that's going on, I'm kind of telling you, you know what, I feel safe with you. So it's, it's a compliment. It's a it's total a nice compliment. Thing. Now, women don't think that way. It's like, pull your head out, dude, and get some clothes on. On, wash the Cheeto dust off your fingers, let's go out and let you be the life of the party. But what happens is we're, men feel like this constant need to fight and to win and to win and to win. Once we've won and we've got you, we feel safe with you now. So now you're part of our team. We don't feel the need to compete so, for so you. So what do we learn from that predictability when it comes to romance? I mean, how do you romance in a predictable way? It sounds kind of like a, like an oxymoron. But yeah. what you do is you, you predictably touch. In a consistent, over time, predictable, safe way, you just keep romancing. See, for us, the romance is more of the ritual than it is the actual romance. See, women think of romance as like a dinner, an evening, a candlelight, a moment, a time. Men might think of it more over time. Romance might be consistently touching me, consistently cuddling, consistently being with me and making me so feel safe. So don't make romance an event, so to speak? I probably wouldn't. I'd make it a process. I'd okay. make it a long-term way that we just are romantic. Now, again, men and romance, we, we don't necessarily think that way. 
Because again, we're not thinking I've got a romance, or we're thinking, well, let's get this event done, oh. or let's get the action done. It's Blow weird. Out the candles, basically. So, so that's that. Now there was another. Um, there was another idea. That One of the things you say is that men care, but women just don't understand. We care. Totally. But sometimes they don't understand how we're showing that we're yeah. caring. Yeah. Well, you just think we don't care. We full on care. We just don't care like you care. We care differently. <laughs> Got it. It, it sounds weird, but. Um, so, how do men and women care differently? Well, uh, for example, a man wants to serve you. A man wants to tell you, like, when you're hurting, we'll t we want to fix it. So, shot it and quit talking about it. <laughs> just do what I say. Let's end the talk. The talk is cheap. Let's get to some action where we'll fix it. So, one way I want to serve you is by telling you how to do something or by answering your question. How many times have you, my wife said, Oh, what a day? And I'm just like, you know what, get a babysitter and get out there and leave the kids and go. And I'm trying to solve it. She thinks I'm just controlling her. Okay, so when you're going off to your husband about everything that went wrong in your day and you're elaborating on all of the emotional trauma yeah. you experienced and, and the husband cuts you off and says, I'm so sorry, and what wants you gotta to go do to the solution, is, uh -huh. don't think That's of it That's him trying like to love you. It's a weird thing because you think if, if he loved you, you could just talk about it. But us talking about your pain no. just induces more pain. It's the action. It's showing the action. Yeah. It's taking action. That's what guys do. That's it. I'm getting well, advice on both sides of the table. Look at me. I'm right in the middle. Don't listen to Darren. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. I know all about Darren. But, but, I see him three times a week. What, you know what, what I mean? One of your other tips, though, I love this, yeah. is that a happy wife is sexy. There is nothing. Really? Yes, check yes. this out. There's not a bigger turn on. Nobody, well, than a happy wife in lingerie. That's one thing. <laughs> but just a happy wife. See, men feel this need that if you're not happy, it must be because of me. If That's why when you start getting angry at the children, the men jump up and they want to start killing the kid. Because it must have been something he's not doing they or doing. They want you happy. A happy, smiling, uh, excited about life, not negative talking, showing hope in her life, having a future creates a sense of well-being for the man. That's a well-being that makes us want to be with you. The minute you start harping or being negative, now it's hard because you're harping because you want to bond and communicate sure, around sure. it. So I'm not saying the men don't need to pick up their game because men absolutely need to learn to communicate more. And what women might need to learn to do is communicate less. Oh, because he said it. here's why: if you communicate a lot about your negative things, it's going to start to the men's going to start to internalize it. It's going to be like, see, I can't even make her happy. My right. only job in life is to make her happy, and she's miserable. Right. And I gave her six kids, and now she's really miserable. <laughs> Hold on, those were her ideas. And um, we, it's almost like we have this weird thing going on with us. But if we could just know you're happy, one of the best ways to know you're happy is compliment us, tell us, show us what's great in your life, smile once in a while, be excited about. Things. This is the aha moment. I hope women understand. When, when a husband gets home from work, we don't want to hear. We don't want to hear it. As much as you want to tell us how rough your day is, but obviously we don't want to. Hear, we want to hear you that you're happy, you're wonderful, yeah. you love us, you're excited to see well, us come home. Well, this is what I'm getting to. I think you nailed something with the negativity because mm -hmm. a lot of times I could tell something to a girlfriend yeah, that wouldn't be perceived as negative, but I uh -huh. tell it to a guy uh -huh. who could perceive it and, as negative. And, and part of that is because we always hear it in reflection to us. When you're talking about how messed up your life is, well, your life, you, you're an appendage of me. And so if you're my wife and your life's messed up, then I must not be pulling my weight. I must not be doing and something. And the weight falls on the I think on men the actually do have a higher propensity to hear the negative than women do. One of the biggest things I have a lot of men say is, she's just so negative. She's so negative. I can't do anything right in her book. But yeah. I think that's part of our job is identifying negative just so we can fix it because we're all about the fixing. So we try to identify the negative and we can fix it. And that's women need to hear what they're saying probably differently. Because yeah, that's doesn't, right. They don't mean it as negative. No, not at all. No, see, and now. part of it, honestly, and this is where the men need to pick it up. The men, and we could spend a whole show talking about what the men need to do, which is in a way just the opposite. Men need to be more attentive, listen to where the wife is in pain, and help her talk it out too. I don't want women to just never talk to their partner about their pains. Right. They need to. Uh, but as we're talking about romancing a guy, you got to know if this is one more really quick thing. Women's minds don't turn off. So like when we're about to get into that moment, that exciting, romantic, intimate moment, and you pull out something about the carpool, <laughs> we're like, huh? Seriously? Shut it. <laughs> fix it. We'll fix that later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, sorry. Am I in your space? <laughs> we we got to tell you, Matt's got... Stuff. 
he's got all sorts of great ideas. And if you'd like to like to know more, got a website. Of course, you can call yes. him uh, down at marriagemattersutah.com yeah. is the website. You guys got workshops, we all got sorts of stuff tons coming of up. Stuff. Couples retreats coming up. We have a big retreat coming up February 21st. Then we have a big overnight retreat at Thanksgiving Point, March 13th. If you and your partner need to get the relationship going, it's called Hot Nights. Hot Nights with Matt baby. Townsend, baby. <laughs> now so, there's the oxymoron. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Sorry. See, I'm you sorry. need positivity, Brooke. I'm not <laughs> feeling the romance. I'm so sorry. Okay, yeah, check out his website for all of that information, fun activities for couples to really enrich their marriage. And now, new subject. We ready? Yes. A little new subject. This is actually a follow-up to a conversation the three of us had on Tuesday. Matt joined yeah, us via phone. That a woman a wrote one. in saying, well, we actually talked about, a, it was a blog that we saw. A woman had a chore chart for her husband. Mm -hmm. And the, the ch you know, the payoff happened in the bedroom. Well, here's a funny email we got in response to that. Um, it came from a viewer. Yeah, she says, I just saw your piece about the husband chore chart and earning romantic rewards. It made me laugh because seeing my husband fix or clean things around the house often turns me on. I guess I think he must really <laughs> love me because he's doing this thing for me. I also get to see him use yeah. all of his muscles. And uh, so anyway, now he knows how that affects me. He's learned to fix a lot more things he didn't know how to fix before. The viewer, by the way, didn't want to give her name. She signs it too embarrassed <laughs> oh, to wow. say. I'm into this. I can see this. You right? know what? Like I know who muscles. that is. <laughs> My wife, <laughs> she's always checking me. Out. I can't even vacuum without her getting all over me. It's horrible. Your muscles just bulge. It's hard to flex when you're vacuuming now. They move so easily. Oh They're boy, effortless. we got a good laugh about that. So thanks for writing in. That was really fun. Hey thanks, Matt, good guys. tips as well. Thanks. Thank you so much.